this is Cape Sipes from Custom Audio Reimagined here with another review. Because of my recent shoulder surgery, I'm unable to do any major reviews in my shop dealing with giant subs or amps because I can't pick them up. But while I'm sitting here in my office bored out of my mind, I realize I have a very cool product that I could do a review on, and here it is. It is the MTX IX1s. So, in my incapacitated state, I'm going to do this little review. Let's go ahead and do the unboxing, and then we'll figure out a way to have a true test of them without it just being opinionated on what I think they sound like. Because you may hear things different than me, so they may sound great to me and suck to you. So i got to figure out a scientific way of coming up with a conclusion. And the unboxing. I'm going to be unboxing it with my one arm and my bad shoulder. Did you open the box? very cool case inside this is one of my favorite features of these headphones is this very nice case it comes with please excuse my bad arm have your manual the box we have the actual case so get this zipped open oh, open it up and there you have the headphones and your cords has a nice little uh, netting pocket there to hold anything else you want to have in your pouch. These are the red ones, obviously. Notice the latching. If you're wondering how the audio gets there, check it out. They use the steel contacts, so when you lock it back in place, let me get that in frame. So when you take this and you lock it, now that speaker's connected. Same on this side, you lock it, now the speakers are connected. The leather is amazing. Probably the best leather I've ever felt on a pair of headphones. It's like a lamb's ass. I don't know what kind of leather they use, but I've had multiple headphones, I've had DJ headphones, I've had everything, and usually it's just cheesy pleather, but this stuff is, uh, this is top notch, the leather they have on here. It's very comfortable on your head. You will notice that there are two 3.5 millimeter inputs. One of these is your input as far as listening to music. The other one actually works as a pass through that you can send to another set of headphones. So if you have a friend that has a pair of these and you're on a plane or you're on a bus or whatever you're doing together, you can actually listen to the same MP3 player, iPod, whatever, by running into one, then jumping out of this one into the next set of headphones. It's kind of a cool feature to have. But uh, that's the unboxing. I mean, that's really it. They're very easy to fold up. You just click them, click them, put them in there. Cables comes with two sets of cables. You notice this cable, which they are very nice, terminated, street wires, 3.5 millimeter jacks. But this cable has nothing but another 3.5 millimeter jack on the other end. So if you have not an iPod, if you just have an MP3 player or you're going to use your phone or whatever you want to use as your music player, you can use this cord to do so. Or this can be your parallel jump cord. So if you're going to jump out of an, this headphone into another set of headphones, this works as that also. But if you have a standard MP3 player, you're going to use these. The reason I say that is because the second cord which is also very nice street wires terminated 3.5 millimeter in there very nice this other cord has that in line this will control your iPod or your iPhone iPad whatever you're going to use it for it's made specifically to control the iPad iPhone so if you have an iPod and that's what you're going to be using as your source you're going to want to use this as your cord to run from the iPod to your headphones now I'm sure that these buttons will probably control some phones. They may control some functions. I mean I've come across that on multiple kinds of cords like these, but it doesn't control all functions like it will the iPod. So it is made specifically to control the iPod and you can play, pause, volume up, volume down, skip your tracks, do whatever you need to do all from here. So you don't have to reach down and get to your iPod. So I'll go ahead and give you my review of how they sound even though that's going to be an opinionated review. So I'm trying to think of a way to actually test the response. And if I figure that out, then you're going to see here in a second. OK, 
Okay, so here is my ingenious way to try and uh, give you some sort of idea of the headphones. <laughs> Term Lab. Right now it's peaked at 110.6 decibels. I have sandwiched the, <laughs> the sensor into the headphones. I know this isn't the most scientific way, but if I tell you they sound great, what does that really tell you? I mean, we have different hearing, so there's no possible way I can tell you they sound great and they're really loud and you should believe me. So this at least lets me show you that they're doing a 110 on Termlab. Not bad for some headphones. And they are comfortable as hell to wear with that 110 decibels going through your ears. Right now I'm actually running cycles through it and uh, I'll tell you at 30 hertz, even at 20 hertz, you can feel it. I mean, it's vibrating off your head. They want to they want to shimmy off your ears. You actually get that impact of the bass. It's pretty impressive. I don't know how they do it, but it's like having little baby subwoofers in your ears. It's pretty badass. So uh, that's my techie way <laughs> of showing you how these things run. You can make fun of it. Oh, we hit 111.2. So the MTX IX1s, my conclusion. There is no doubt that they are on the top of the pile of headphones. Um, the sound quality is amazing. Everything about them was crystal clear. The bass was very cool to feel my earrings chattering and vibrating because the bass hits would vibrate against your head. But they were clean. They were not distorted. They're just a great pair of headphones. But my issue when using these headphones, I tested them across my PC sound card as well as tested them with an iPod. With an iPod, they sound much better. Well, the iPod has a very high-end sound processor inside of it. That's why an iPod sounds so good. The processor inside the iPod allows you to get the full potential of these headphones. I personally am not an Apple fan. I don't like iPods, but in that regard, they do have the market nailed with a very high quality small sound card. The processor in the iPod is very good and it gives you great sound. If I plug them into my phone, they didn't sound near as good. I mean, not even remotely close to listening to them with the iPod because my phone has a crappy sound processor in it, so therefore it doesn't kick out the enriched sound that these headphones were made to play. On my computer, they sounded almost on par with the iPod because I have an external sound card for my computer. The quality of it's very good. Um, something I will touch on though, when they compress music, it loses something. It has to. You can't take something and make it smaller without a loss. Um, there are formats out there that are lossless audio formats. That means that it doesn't lose anything as far as the audio. Those are the best to listen to, but they're larger in size. So I know a lot of you like to fit 50,000 songs onto your iPod, which you're never going to listen to them all, but you like to cram them all onto your iPod. Please do your music, do your ears justice. You buy them based on my review and you're like, man, Cape said these are great, I'm going to get them. You put them on your ears and you think they sound horrible. I want you to look at your music. What do you have it compressed at? Are you listening to it at 128? Are you listening to it at 320? Are you listening to a high quality MP3? Are you listening to a lossless codec? What are you listening to? Because the source seems to have gotten lost ever since these MP3s and everything have came out. All these different audio formats. And we've, we like to point the finger at components when, at the end of the day, it's our fault. We ruined the music by squishing it down. We ruined it by compressing it down to the smallest little, smallest little bit of information that we can make it. And then we wonder why it doesn't have a big, beautiful, and rich sound to it. Well, it did until you squished it. Now it's this big. And you want it to sound this big. And I can't do it two hands because my shoulder hurts. But you want it to sound this big. And you made it this big. That's the problem. A lot of people say they can't tell the difference. And there is no difference between 120 or 160 or 320. And there is. There's a huge difference. The problem is the difference is in the bass. See, the largest part of a song, the, the, what has the most information, what takes up all that room, is the bass. The low end of a track. So when you compress a song down, the first thing it's going to get rid of is everything in the lower spectrum. The 20, the 30, the 40, the 50, the 60, the 70 hertz range, it's going to dump that down. Right? So that's the first thing you're going to lose. 
But when you listen to your earbuds, you don't care. Because your little earbuds, all they do is like to play high frequencies. So you think the song sounds great because they can't reproduce bass anyway. A pair of headphones like these, they can reproduce that bass. I got these to play down to 20 hertz and in my ear and it felt awesome. Because it's just, a, it's just an ear massage. But it was there and it didn't distort, it didn't fall out. They will not play that frequency if you have a compressed MP3 that's compressed so low that it's gotten rid of that information. And that's what's going to happen. And you're going to think these don't sound good and they are horrible headphones and I lied to you. Which is not the case. Your music library sucks. And you need to fix it. Um, same thing with listen to any of your MP3s that you've ripped from various different places. Look at the different bit rates. Then put those songs in order and listen to them on the headphones. You'll notice a significant volume difference. A significant frequency difference. The bass won't be there. The mid-range may not be there. The vocals may not be quite as crisp and high as another MP3 that was recorded at a higher bit rate. So, as far as these headphones go, the MTX IX1s, these things are amazing. I love them. Thank you, MTX. Um, I'm going to enjoy them. And also, I think I'm going to go ahead and give away a pair. So, along with the battery, I have the Ecstatic Model 800 battery that I'm going to be giving away to a subscriber. I'm also going to be giving away a pair of these, and I'm going to do it before Christmas so that you can have it before Christmas. So, if you want a chance to win, subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter. Be friends with me on Facebook. Check me out on Pass Mag's blog. You can find me all over the place. But as far as the MTX IX1s go, these things are Cave Sipes approved. These things are badass. I love them. They are probably the best headphones I've ever listened to. The sound quality is amazing. The volume, the output, the no distortion, everything about them was right on par. This is Cave Sipes. I appreciate you watching my review. I hope to see you in my next one. Give them hell, right? Case like ripping the mob to do his job. He'll put Lamborghini doors on the old Pinto. From Kentucky to the shop, to the AY reside. If you don't want your ride made, you should commit suicide. You might as well take your life if you don't want to ride right. You might as well park your car and